fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, let go, big fellow. I am Silver. Josh Kinsey and Cy Adams owned adjoining spreads in the far southwest, but they were anything but neighborly. Their mutual dislike, which had started with a dispute over a line fence, had developed into a feud... Hardly a week passed that there wasn't trouble about one thing or another. Hey, boss, look over there. A few of Kinsey's cowpokes are rounded up more of their strays on our range. Come on. We'll teach them to stay on their own side of the line. Right at them slinging lead. Right. Get it. Get, Get it. Now. Before that week was over, Cy Adams' men retaliated because of the loss of some of the cattle and the wounding of one of their men. It was Tex who rushed into the bunkhouse with the news. Quick, everybody! Yes, one of the barns is on fire. Yes, I saw somebody riding away just a few minutes ago. It must have been one of Adam's cowhands. The boss will be plenty mad now. Let's get out there and fight that fire. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. It seemed that matters were going from bad to worse. And the dislike between Cy and Josh grew into a strong hatred. Josh, a widower, lived alone with his son, Terry. Cy Adams, a bachelor, lived with his orphaned nephew, Jimmy. Both boys were about ten years old and had become close friends, unknown to their elders. The boys met secretly to play together whenever possible. One morning, a cowpoke reigned to a stop at the Adams ranch house. Ho, 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 is he... Well, what's eating you, Jack? Say, boss, I thought you ought to know that split rail fence we put up across the east corner of the range is down again. What? That's right, I just come from there. Dead blast that ornery Josh Kinsey. He must have had his ranch hands full of down late yesterday so as to drive cattle through again. Well, that settles it. I'm going to town order some of that newfangled barbed wire fencing to put up. What's the matter, Uncle Si? Uh, nothing that concerns you, Jimmy. This is grown-up's business. Boss, about that barbed wire, it's dangerous stuff. Is that stuff. the wire you looked at in town, Uncle Si? The kind that has stickers yes, on it? Yes, yes, Jimmy. Now, now run along. Now, like I said, Jack, I'm getting plenty of that wire, and we're putting it up. That'll take care of Josh Kinsey. Will it make Mr. Kinsey mad, Uncle Si? Well, of course he'll make him mad. That's why... 
Now, listen here, Jimmy. I told you to run along and be quiet. Yes, sir. <laughs> It'll be worth all I have to pay for that barbed wire fencing to hear what Josh Kinsey has to say about it. I'm going to be shooting over it, boss. Good. Won't be the first time we've traded lead with that Kinsey crowd, but that fence will go up and stay up. And that's that. That same day, Josh Kinsey and his young son, Terry, were eating supper when the foreman of the ranch entered. All right to speak to you now, boss. Come in, Tex. Come in. What's on your mind? Hi, Terry. Hello. I, uh, I just come from town, boss. Well? Got a bit of news while I was there. Might interest you considerable. Well, let's have it, then. Cy Adams got a whole load of barbed wire. Huh? Rolls and rolls of it. <laughs> You mean that dirty low-down coyote's fixing to use that murderous wire to fence us out? Well, that's right. He's fixing to do just that, so I heard tell in town. I won't let him get away with using it. Why is Mr. Adams going to use that kind of wire, Dad? To keep us from getting our cattle across a bit of his land, that's why. It means driving them ten miles around if we don't go across that way. Why does he care? Because he hates me, that's why. Now, Terry, well, you go why ahead. does he hate you, Dad? Do you hate him, too? Do I hate Cy Adams? Of course I do. Why shouldn't I? I don't know. Why? For lots of reasons, that's why. I could tell you from now to we... Eat your supper, Terry, and stop pestering me with silly questions. Yes, Dad. Tex, you tell the rest of the boys. We'll keep our eyes open. Right, Josh. Soon Cy Adams and his bunch start putting up that wire fence, we'll face him for a showdown once and for all. That afternoon, Cy Adams and some of his men rode alongside the big wagon that was hauling the barbed wire from town. Well, by thunder, this wire will settle things with Kinsey. Yeah, boss, but he'll do all he can to stop us putting it up. Hey, Cy, there's some horsemen coming up behind us fast. Looks like the Kinsey bunch. Well, whip up that team, get going with the wire. We'll drop back and hit them off. Get her! Get her! Get her! All right, get ready for them, boys. Get your guns handy. Ho, 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 ho. Hey, boss, the coyotes are shooting at us. All right, throw letters there, boys. Oh, oh, hey! The fight lasted only about five minutes. Cy Adams and his men drove off the Kinsey ranch hands, who turned and galloped away after one of them was wounded. They returned to Josh Kinsey's ranch and stopped at the corral. Josh walked toward them as they dismounted. What happened? What's the matter with Jim? We tried to stop Adams from getting that barbed wire home to his spread, but he and some of his cowpokes were riding along with the wagon. That's right. They put up a gunfight. Jim got wounded, so we decided we'd better leave. Get Jim inside and fix him up. All right, boss. As for Cy Adams, let him take that barbed wire home. All he wants of it. But when he comes to putting it up, that'll be a different story. You can bet on that. It was dusk when Toto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, stopped at the temporary camp they shared in the nearby hills. You've been gone a long time, Toto. Uh-huh. Me stay a little longer, get news. Oh, what news? Uh, me hear talk about range war. A range war? Uh, Just what did you hear? Well, me hear men say, fellow named Cy Adams buy plenty wire with points. He make fence on range, make others plenty mad. I know where Adams' spread is. I understand he's been having a feud with Josh Kinsey, who owns the adjoining spread. Isn't that right? So he's going to use barbed wire. Ah, uh, it make Kinsey and other ranchers plenty mad. Them have shooting war, maybe. That may be the outcome if Adams puts up barbed wire fencing. You hear men say that. Well, the trouble won't start until actual work on the fence has begun. We'll keep an eye on things over there and do all we can to prevent a range war. The following afternoon, Terry, riding a pony, approached a clump of cottonwoods along the trail near his father's ranch. Jimmy, who also owned a pony, was waiting there. Oh, oh boy! Hi there, Jimmy. Been waiting long? Uh-huh. Most an hour. You knew I'd come, though, didn't you? Sure. I brought you something. You did? What? This. Golly, a make-believe gun. Just like the one you have. Yep. Here, take it. Gee, and the way it's painted. Sure looks real, doesn't it, Terry? Yep. Golly, thanks. Where'd you get it? Tex made it. Like he did mine. Gosh. Did you tell him about us being friends and all? Yeah, but Tex won't tell. He thinks we ought to be friends. He thinks your Uncle Cy and my father ought to be friends, too. He does? Sure. 
But I guess they never will be. Grown-ups are funny, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Guess I'd get a licking from Uncle Si if he knew I met you here all the time. Mm, guess Dad licked me, too, if he found out. Bet he thinks I ought to hate you like he hates your uncle. Yeah, but it's more fun being friends, I think. <laughs> me, too. Tex says someone who hates someone else is an abomination in the eyes of mankind. Golly, Tex said that? Yep. I learned it word for word. What's it mean? Um, uh, I don't know. Neither did Tex. He heard a preacher say that once. Anyway, he's, it's, he's sure it's something not good. Gosh, I wouldn't want to be that. Me neither. He, he look, now that we have wooden guns, let's... Uh, listen, somebody's coming down the trail. Yeah, let's keep out of sight till I get close. Then we'll play hold of <laughs> That'll be fun. Here they come. Come on. Put them up, we got you covered. Those are the most confident, Golly, look, an outlaw and an Indian. Just get them up, both of you. <laughs> All right, son. <laughs> Guess you two hombres have the drop on us. Uh, better do as he says, Tonto. Easy, steady, slow. Ah, them mean-looking guns. Gosh, Terry, <laughs> now what do we do? If that outlaw... Well, I'm not an outlaw, son. But you have a mask on. I have my reason for the mask. <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid those wooden guns aren't enough to keep us here. Oh, golly, he knows they aren't real. <laughs> They're real enough for your games, boys. <laughs> We'll put our hands down now, Tonto. Uh. <laughs> you, uh, you boys live nearby? Oh, yes, sir. I'm Terry Kinsey, and he's Jimmy Adams. We're friends. I see. Are you Josh Kinsey's boy? Yes, sir. And Cy Adams is my uncle. I live with him. If they don't know we're friends, they wouldn't like it. You boys are lucky to have each other for friends. Is that Indian your friend, mister? That's right. Tonto is my friend. My father hates Jimmy's uncle. Uncle Cy hates him, too. I've heard about their feeling toward each other. I feel sorry for them both. You do? That's what Tex said, too. Oh, who's Tex? Our foreman. He says Dad and Mr. Adams are going to start a range war if they keep on. That's what. Uh-huh. And Uncle Si says tomorrow morning he's going to start putting up a barbed wire fence. And he says he'll be ready for trouble, too. Dad told all our men they have to ride with him tomorrow morning to stop Jimmy's uncle and his men from putting up the wire. Ah, look like trouble come tomorrow, Kimasabi. Yes, Toto. Oh, uh, where is the fence to be built? Over yonder where the trail goes along the creek, between Terry's ranch and ours. I see. We'll ride over that way, Tonto. Ah. See you again, boys. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, now, easy, fella. Come on, fella. Come on, fella. Goodbye, mister. Bye. Golly, did you see that big white horse? Uh-huh, sure a beauty. Oh, I hope we meet that masked man again. I like him. So do I. And the Indian, too. Hey, we better start home. It's getting near supper time. All right. I tell you what. Let's meet here tomorrow, and we'll ride over and see what happens. Wanna? All right. We'll meet right here tomorrow, then. Meantime, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode over to inspect the disputed boundary line between the ranches. That's where the rail fence was taken down, so Terry's father could drive his cattle through. Ah, it's not good if wire fence be put up. Those two men got together instead of being at each other's throats. Their ranches would be more prosperous. Ah, boys have more sense than older ones. Yes, they become good friends. Look, Jim Savvy. Who's over who? Seems like Kins and his men are going to drive cattle across Adam's land before the wire fence is put up. Ah, and then leave herd on Kinsey's side for night and drive them through in early morning, maybe. If you don't get those cattle through before Adam's men come to put up the fence, there'll really be trouble. And Kinsey will lose some of his cattle. Mm, that's right. Well, we'd better go back to our camp for the night. We'll be right over here early in the morning, Toto. Ah, maybe it's better if we... Hey, look! Hello! Men see us. Make for the arroyo, quick. Come on, Hello, stop! Get down there! The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue. As the Lone Ranger and Toto sat on their horses watching a roundup of the Kinsey cattle near the boundary line of the Adam spread, their presence was suddenly discovered by the cowhands. The Lone Ranger and Toto headed into a nearby arroyo. We ride along the arroyo. And what we do? We leave for the present. The best thing to do. Monson Meantime, one of Cy Adams' ranch hands stopped hurriedly before the Adams' ranch house. Oh, ho, 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 hold on, boy. All right, come on in. Yeah, what's up this time, Jack? I thought you ought to know, boss, that Kinsey's rounded up a big herd of his cattle. He's got them all ready to run across our spread early in the morning. Before we get down that way to start working on the wire fence. So he's fixing to get his herd through in the morning, huh? <laughs> Well, we'll set out earlier. Give Kinsey and his cowpokes a little surprise. Ah, that's a good idea, boss. Jack, you tell the boys to be ready to ride at sunup. Yes, sir. After we keep them cattle from getting through, we'll get to work on the fence. And that'll be one fence that Josh Kinsey won't find so easy to pull down every time he wants to get his herds across my spread. We'll all be ready to ride with you, boss. All right, good. Tomorrow's a good time to settle this feud between Kinsey and me once and for all. At dawn the following morning, Josh Kinsey sat on his horse, giving final instructions to his men. We'll start the herd moving right away, men. Hi, Josh. All right. That'll give us time to get him well across the corner of Adam's spread before his men come down to put the fence up. All right. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to let him put up that ornery wire fence, boss? As soon as we get the cattle across, some of us will come back and see what we can do to prevent that fence from being put up. The way I look at it, there's plenty we can do. Sure is. It may mean flying lead, boss. Uh, Why can't you settle it peaceful like? Don't try to tell me how to run things on this spread. If you want to work for me, you'll do what I tell you, understand? If Adams has his way, my spread will go to the dogs, and you'll all be out of jobs then. Now get them cattle started and see that you keep them moving in the right direction. All right, boys, you heard what the boss said. Now get to work. Get it, come on. Meantime, Cy Adams and his men were riding toward the place where Kinsey intended to drive his herd across. The boys, we'll settle this matter first. Later, the wagons will come along with the fence posts and the wire so as we can get to work on the fence. Josh Kinsey ain't going to turn back them cattle without a fight, Cy. That's right, boss. One of us might get plugged. As long as you're working for me, boys, any fight of mine is a fight of yours, too. So don't forget that. Kinsey wants to argue with lead, then we'll accommodate him. I heard talk in town last night, Si. They were saying at the cafe that you hired an outlaw to rustle some of Kinsey's cattle during the night. What? That's right. Kinsey's men swear they seen a masked man and an engine hanging around earlier in the evening, and they run them off. Masked Umbry was riding a big white stallion. Well, that's something they dreamed up. <laughs> I guess knowing they're in for a showdown makes them kind of nervous. Especially Josh Kinsey. <laughs> Yeah, there they are. Heading across my spread with a whole herd. All right, come on, man. Get your guns handy. Ride in from this side and stampede them cattle back where they come from. All right, come on. Get up here. Oh, yeah. oh, come on. Oh, oh, get up. Get up. Now start shooting. Oh. Hear the cattle spilling around. Heading back, man. They're starting down the trail by the creek. Some of them will be lost, son. Well, it'll be Kinsey's hard luck. Keep shooting, man. Oh. A 
About this time, Terry and Jimmy, who had heard of the impending trouble, met at their usual place on their ponies, and then rode along the trail by the creek toward where the herd was to be driven through. I wonder if there'll be real shooting, Jimmy. Golly, if there is, somebody might get hurt. Yeah, that's right. Gosh, did you hear that? I do hear something. Hold it, hold on, hold on, hold, hold, hold. Stay, boy. Golly, they're shooting. Maybe we shouldn't have come. Uncle Cy would be mad if he knew I was here. Well, my father would be too. Guess we better... Listen, what's that? What? Sounds like thunder or something. Oh, there ain't a cloud in the sky. It looks like... Golly! Look! The cattle herd coming at us. We'll be traveling if we don't get away from here. The ponies are scared. Let's go back, quick. Yeah, let's get up, Billy. Come on, boy. Come on. Hurry up, Terry. I am hurry. Get up there. Riding furiously alongside the stampeding herd, saw Kinsey just ahead. Well, yeah, this will teach you, Josh. Kinsey, this will teach you. I'll get you for this, Adam. Help! Help! Look! In the path of the herd, a boy! That's Jimmy, my nephew. Look on the ground, there's another one. They'll be trampled to death. You'll be responsible for... Great day, the other one's my boy, Terry. And we can't do a thing to save him. Get him! Get him! A short distance away, other eyes had seen the danger of the two little boys. The Lone Ranger and Toto had ridden unobserved up the trail. Look, Kimasabi. Herd stampede. Boys in trouble. We've got to get to them, Toto. Hit big chance. Maybe we'll, we'll take the chance. Come on, Help! Without giving further thought to the great risk they were taking, the masked man and Indian urged their horses toward the onrushing herd. The Lone Ranger's one thought was to get to the boys and try to save them from a terrible fate under the hoofs of the maddened cattle. Silver and Scout, sensing the danger that lay ahead, seemed to slacken their pace for just a moment. Then, at the urging of their masters, they overcame their fears and raced forward at greater speed. Master, big fella! Come on, Silver! Get him up! Within a couple of minutes, the two men covered the distance that separated them from the boys. Jimmy's pony had run off, and as the Lone Ranger and Tonto stopped, the two boys stood waiting with terror showing in their faces. Who's over? Who's over? Terry, sir! Oh. I couldn't believe it! Quick, son, give me your hand. Take my boy! Hurry up, we'll be caught! Hang on tight, boys. Come on, pull it! Lad, you all right? Sure, I'm all right, Uncle Si. My ankles hurt. Thank heaven you're safe, oh, son. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, that's the old hoopla chase last night. We better hold him for the sheriff. Now, hold on, all of you. Maybe this is the masked hombre that Si had snooping last night. But he... Well, I just saw him save my boy, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, I never saw that masked man before. Any snooping he did was on his own. But I'm darn glad he was snooping or Jimmy would have been trampled to death. Yeah, that's that's right. I saw Terry's pony go down, boss. Jimmy could have got away, but he stopped to help Terry. What were you boys doing here anyway? And what were you doing together? The boys are friends, Kinsey. And Jimmy Adams was willing to give his life to stay by his friend Terry. Well, I'll be doggone. So you boys got to be friends in spite of Josh and me hating each other, huh? Golly, Uncle Si, being friends is better and much more fun. Sure is. While you two were busy feuding with each other, the kids were meeting every day and becoming good friends. That's right. You know, Uncle Si, Tex told Terry you and Mr. Kinsey are abominations. He said we're what? <laughs> he meant your feeling toward each other was foolish for a couple of grown men, Kinsey. We think grown-ups act funny anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh... I guess maybe our boys got a better slant on how to get along than we have. Well, 
What are we going to do about it? Well, it ain't too late, Josh. It ain't too late. I'm sure you'll both find that as neighbors, it's far better to be friends. The future of the West depends upon the ranchers helping one another. Well, my friend and I will leave now. Let's go, Toto. Come on, sit away. Let's go. See, Dad, even the masked man has a good friend. That Indian who's riding away with him now. Well, I guess we could use a good friend, too, huh, Josh? Yep, I guess we could, Si. I'm taking back that wire this afternoon. The men will go to work pulling down the rest of the rail fences. Now Please. you're talking, Si. You... You really mean that? I sure do. Let's try being friends for a while. Looks like it works with our boys right well. All right, Si. Here's my hand on it. Is that all right with you boys? It sure is. Golly, I I think it's fine. How about it, man? We're all for it. You know, that stranger with a mask had a lot to do with all this. I wonder just who he is, anyway. He calls his horse Silver, and his friend's name is Tonto. Yeah, and the masked man has shiny silver bullets in his belt. Holy smoke, Josh, we've heard of that hombre. You're doggone right we have, Si. Boys, that's one of the greatest hombres in the whole West. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll sell This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. A part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. (laughs) 